Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here with you, my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous channel members and patrons. This is the first of the exclusive videos. We will be doing these every single Sunday, so I'm I'm so glad that you're here. I hope that your membership is being made worth it. If you've got suggestions for subreddits that you'd like me to read, do go ahead and give them to me. I do want to please you in the only way that I know how, with my mouth. <laughs> I'm already making it a little weird, aren't I? That's okay. Today we're jumping back into r slash entitled parents. It's a classic on the channel. It's one that has kind of gone by the wayside, but I thought that I'd dip my toes back into it just to see how it goes. So we'll do the thing. We'll get the plugs and disclaimers out of the way, just sort of as a formality. And then we will dive right into some of this r slash entitled parents uh, cringe. Grandma Karen yells at Dairy Queen staff. Granddaughter nearly brought to tears with embarrassment. Oh, leave the Dairy Queen people alone, all right? They flipped their little cone upside down. What else do you want from them? You know, they're working magic over here. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's actually magic. I think it's just because it's ice cream, but it's pretty cool that they do that. Hand it to you upside down and shit. <laughs> it's a gimmick. Works for me. Uh, despite how long this post looks, the incident happened within more or less like 10 minutes. And honestly, I didn't think that old people actually acted like this until Grandma Karen decided that waiting her turn was not worth her time. Well, you see... Old people don't have that much longer on this planet. <laughs> that doesn't mean that you should always let them go first. Maybe ask them why. And she's like, I have brain cancer. I'm like, all right, go get your ice cream. <laughs> it's probably not going to take that long to make a Dairy Queen order, right? Oh, that got real dark real fast. <laughs> uh, she also decided that a yelling fit was the best way to get what she wants. Total care and move. Also, if the dialogue feels a little bit choppy, I translated it from my native tongue, and it's not verbatim, but from what my godmother and I remembered. Oh, godmother taking you out for ice cream? That's a good old time, I'm telling you. I don't think I even have a godmother, but if I did, I hope she would take me out for ice cream. <laughs> uh, this story happened around last week, when my family and I, 24 female, went out with some family friends. We'd gone to the mall to chill, and were planning on eating dinner there after buying some groceries. Since the weather was really humid at the time, the five of us decided we wanted to get some Dairy Queen before going on our mauling trip. Yeah, that's that's really all you do, right? Eat food and spend money? <laughs> the mall's a trap, bro. Don't go down there. I don't go down there no more. Just order everything online. That's fine. <laughs> so, Godmother, let's call her GM. She's a 56-year-old female. And I volunteered to buy the ice cream on the second floor, while the rest of our group looked for a table at the food court down below. COVID restrictions are a bit more relaxed now, and because of that, and the hot weather, there was a small line forming at the DQ. Oh, that's cool, that's hip. DQ. Yeah, you wanna head over the DQ? <laughs> I'll be there ASAP. So, my godmother and I, are three to four large steps behind this teenager, let's just call her T. I'd reckon that she was around 18 to 20 years old, and she was quietly looking at the overhead menu while waiting in line when we queued up behind her, discussing which flavors to try and leaning forward ever so slightly to squint. Mind you, we were very much out of arm's reach of this teenager, and out of nowhere, a woman, our entitled grandmother, between like 55 to 65, rushes to teenager's side, startling all three of us. She then gives us a mean look while teenager flinches and gives both of us an apologetic side glance. Nah, you good. <laughs> There's only one person that's messing up this situation and it's the one that just popped up. Everything was going fine until you showed up. What's going on here? Entitled grandmother in an angry voice. Uh-oh. Matutu kayo, rumespekto ng space at uso ang social distancing. 
Oh, it's it's Tagalog, isn't it? Wifey! Wifey! You want to hear me butcher some Tagalog? <laughs> the translation is please respect personal space and learn some social distancing. My godmother raised her eyebrow. Dinig mo yon? Mag social distancing daw tayo. Did you hear that, OP? Let's do some social distancing. Oh, yeah. She, she feisty, too. You know them Filipino grandmothers, right? <laughs> I mean, maybe you don't, but I do. And they got some wit on them. <laughs> My godmother then proceeds to give me a one-arm tug, and we continued to chat about what flavors we were getting and what our companions wanted. The teenager gets to the counter and puts in her order, while entitled grandmother stalks out of the store to glare at us. And then she proceeds to glare and scowl and snap at any of the other customers who were giving her weird looks for her comment. I mean, let's all just publicly shame her, okay? If we work together, we can make her awkward enough to leave the store, right? <laughs> Now the Dairy Queen is a really small booth-like area in the store, and it only has a cashier and a counter at the storefront. Some of the Dairy Queen branches here have a sitting or dining area, but this one is just basically a booth store. So the customers are all outside of the store itself, waiting to be called in. By customers, this included like several food delivery drivers. Oh yeah, Food Panda, Order Mo, we do that sometimes around here. And there were some waiting right outside of the store, along with the seven or so other people who were also waiting for their order. This was inside the mall, so the temperature was cooler than what it would be if this setup was outside in the hot, humid air. Anyway, we order and make our way to the waiting area. Teenager is also somewhere in the waiting area with us, and the other customers, when suddenly Entitled Grandmother again marches up to the counter. Entitled Grandmother in a loud, angry voice, Bakit ang tagal tagal nyo? Ganyan ba talaga kayo makupad gumawag ng ice cream? Why is it taking so long? Why are you that slow in making ice cream? L listen, Grandma, they're not actually making the ice cream back there, okay? <laughs> uh, they're, they're basically just putting it in a cup and adding toppings, right? <laughs> you do understand that, right? The staff says, sorry po ma'am, meron po kasing pila. Sorry ma'am, but we do have a queue. Entitled grandmother, Ang tagal tagal na namang naghihintay dito! Lambas supang minuto na! <laughs> we have been waiting for more than 10 minutes. No, we were behind teenager and we were just finished giving the cashier person our order. It has been like literally two minutes at the very most. People don't want to wait. Like I said, it's hot. She ain't got that much time on this earth. <laughs> she got to get in, get out. <laughs> Honestly, probably, you know, you're, you're, <laughs> I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Let's not dunk on grandmas, okay? At this, teenager walked up to a titled grandmother and quietly tells her that she just ordered and they have to wait a little. <laughs> Entitled grandmother huffs, but steps away from the counter and the person next in line gave her an angry side glance. As this person was ordering, the staff in charge of distributing the orders calls out a delivery order for one of the waiting couriers. This courier had been there even before we went inside to order. As soon as he picked up the order, Entitled Grandmother marches back up to the counter. <laughs> Bro, if you spent this energy on literally anything else, you could figure out how to live forever, okay? <laughs> I don't know why this is such a battle for you. You know what? Here's a refund. I don't even want your money. Okay, just just get out of the store. Stop harassing me. Entitled grandmother in a loud, almost yelling, angry tone. Bakit no ana yon? Ekimi nanua dito ah? How come that guy was served first? We were here first. Staff, merumpo coming first come first serve policy po ma'am. Nauna po siya. Pakinday na lang po order niyo. We have a first come first serve policy, ma'am. His order was processed first. Just please wait for your order. <laughs> she ain't taking no for an answer. She's like, I'm getting that ice cream now. I want to have it half digested already. <laughs> Take a breath. What's wrong with you? It's either grandmother was going to do more yelling, but teenager quietly runs to her and pulls her aside, explaining that Delivery services have priority over walk-in customers and 
that the courier had been there way before they had. Entitled grandmother grumbles and huffs, probably saying something like, Putangi na! <laughs> and by now, all the customers waiting were staring at her. Teenager looked so embarrassed, and she started hiding her face behind her phone. Yeah, now's the time. Just make a TikTok. TikTok all of this shit that's going on. <laughs> I felt really bad for her. Because Entitled Grandmother kept making snide comments and remarks about how slow the staff were, while Teenager quietly told her to stop it. <laughs> she ain't gonna listen. She ain't gonna listen to the teenager. She ain't gonna listen to the cashier. <laughs> She's not taking no for an answer, all right? She got more and more pissed as customers who were there before Teenager got their orders. At one point, the grumbling got so loud that my godmother and I turned our heads to look at this hag, muttering insults that made us and other customers stare. God, hag, that is, that is a strong word, isn't it? <laughs> Good God. Uh, all right then, ain't no problem, I guess. The last time we saw a tantrum like this, it was from a five-year-old kid. Yeah, but that five-year-old kid probably didn't know most of the words that grandma knows to throw around, right? <laughs> Teenager was just looking really helpless at this point and just sort of resorted to hiding behind one of the pillars framing the store. <laughs> well, the rest of us bystanders gave her apologetic looks. Where we're from, it's considered extremely rude to talk back to old people and most old people would throw a fit if you correct them. None of us wanted to embarrass Teenager any more than she already was considering the fact that she looked like she wanted to cry. At this point, another order was called and Entitled Grandmother made a growling sound and marched back to the counter. And Teenager sprang up and yanked her back with so much force that Entitled Grandmother nearly fell backwards. Okay, I understand it's a high tension moment, but don't drag your grandma around by her wrist, all right? She gonna break a hip. <laughs> Nobody's gonna feel good about that. It's not a good situation. I gotta admit, seeing an old lady rubber band was funny. No! <laughs> that's not rubber banding, that's the osteoporosis. No! <laughs> uh, she had a shocked look on her face before turning on Teenager and quietly, but angrily, reprimanding her for pulling her back like that when they were waiting so long in line for Teenager's order. In actuality, it had only been five minutes or so. Teenager was quietly muttering back to her when Entitled Grandmother's husband, uh, EGH, approaches them. Entitled Grandmother's husband addressed Teenager first. Anyare, okay kalangba? What's wrong? Are you okay? Teenager looked helpless as she held Entitled Grandmother back. Bibili poca siako nu- I was just by- Entitled Grandmother then interrupts. Napakakupad! The customer service is absolutely terrible. They've made us wait so long. Entitled Grandmother's husband looks around at all of us, either openly staring, giving side-eye glances, or shooting irritated looks, or even just awkwardly looking away, before looking down at Teenager, who looked like she was about a breeze away from crying. Kinusap mo ba nang maayos? Have you tried asking them nicely if they could prioritize the order because we're in a rush? Entitled Grandmother snaps her mouth shut at that, glares at the staff, marches back and loudly yells that they were in a hurry. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is not the way you do this. How are you expecting anybody to respond to this? Oh, she's just the worst. She really loves Dairy Queen. <laughs> That's what I'm taking away from all this. <laughs> this is just madness. The staff gives her a look and asks her to please kindly wait for your number to be called. She marches back, yells at Teenager to give her the receipt, and then proceeds to rush back to the counter and demand that they process this order now. At this point, we saw the staff look at each other, and look at the other customers. We've all been dealing with this for about 10 minutes by now, and the staff just decided to run her order. No! 
You can't let her. She can't keep getting away with this. <laughs> uh, oh, that's the worst thing ever, dude. I hate it. She won. After all this bullshit, she won. I'm hurt. I'm hurt. <laughs> Deep down. When teenager was called, she ran up to the counter, apologized profusely. The rest of us just gave her quiet nods, and one of the other customers said, It's okay. You did nothing wrong, kid. <laughs> yeah, it's not your fault you were spawned from that. Teenager looked really grateful for the comment and apologized again before trailing behind Entitled Grandmother, who was yelling at her, to hurry up! My godmother leaned over and muttered, This is why there are some old people who shouldn't be brought out in public. <laughs> uh, I mean, that seems harsh, but also, yeah. <laughs> And OP agrees as well. Uh, TLDR, Grandma Karen makes a scene at Dairy Queen by yelling at staff and embarrassing her granddaughter until the poor girl yanked her back three times because she can't be bothered to wait ten minutes in line for ice cream. Edit for spelling errors. Now I do get that it's really hot outside and whatnot. I mean, I'm in the Philippines right now. It's hot, bro. Dairy Queen would quench my thirst. It would it would make everything feel all wonderful. Quench my thirst is probably not the way to do it. If you're really gonna pass out from heat stroke or something like that, please go get some water, okay? <laughs> Ice cream is not what you need in that moment. <laughs> you need to hydrate. This is just absolute insanity, and, and I can't believe she got away with it. I cannot believe. <sighs> it hurts me so deep down, but... Sometimes it is what it is. It's also cool to see something from the Philippines, you know, popping up in that old entitled parents. So I hope that you guys enjoyed it. We'll find one more story to do and then I'll get out of here uh, for the day. So let's jump into it. Entitled father thinks he can waltz back into my life as he pleases. Yeah, because because he's an entitled father, right? <laughs> Uh, I never do very well with these parenting ones. Like, I have a really good relationship with my parents, so it blows my mind when people don't. It's, like, outside of my frame of reference, but I guess it is what it is. I am a 21-year-old female. I'm going to go into all the detail that I can, and any quotes from texts or emails will be directly from the source. My biological father came all the way from Ireland at the age of 12 with his brothers and sisters to live a better life in Canada. He was raised by his sister and he worked all his life. The issues for me began when I was 12. My dad got remarried. Everyone in the family knows that she's a gold digger and that she's only with my dad for his money. Every time I visit my dad, my stepmom is there. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how it works, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had a one-on-one -on -one with my dad in years. She literally just dumped her kids on her ex-husband and moved in with my father. I can't imagine the shit that those kids went through. It does seem to be a common theme that, you know, nobody likes the step-parents and blah, 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 but the truth is, I don't know, you'll be out of the house eventually. Like, if he found somebody to live his life with, then that's great. I can't really call out the claims of being a gold digger or not. She might be, she might not be. <laughs> we have a, a, an unreliable narrator. You're too close to the situation. Ain't that the truth? But I guess we'll have to see how it unfolds. Anyway, my dad began to compare me to my stepsister a lot. At first, I was being bullied in school, and my dad said that I could learn a lot from her because she'd been through the same thing. But then it only became worse. He started using my stepsister to get me to do what he wanted. I didn't have a credit card. Well, Jay had a credit card. I didn't have a bus pass. Well, Jay has a bus pass. <laughs> uh, it's kind of weird lines to draw, but all right. He would start to brag to my mom about how amazing Jay was and how she went to a fancy school and all that. It was just sickening. I began to resent my stepsister because she was just so perfect, and I was not. She had the best grades, the best friends, the best boyfriend, the best life. She was popular, had thousands of Instagram followers, and had lots of makeup. I was the opposite. I had terrible grades, terrible friends who were either crazy incels, or left me, or used me, 
guys never really liked me. I only had like a hundred plus followers and I never wore makeup. Oh man, this this is really all outside my frame of reference. This is like teenage girl stuff. Maybe I shouldn't have jumped into it, but it, <laughs> it's whatever. It is what it is. We gotta push on through. Followers don't make you who you are. Makeup doesn't make you who you are, okay? Terrible friends? Yeah, that's unfortunate. It's time to find some better friends. There are better friends for you out there. It's just a matter of going out and, and forging some bonds. I don't know about the, the whole crazy incels thing. I mean, that's normally what we do on the channel, and that is... That is really bad news. <laughs> you need to get away from those people as soon as possible. My dad was always telling me to be more like her. He even once got my hair cut like hers. My mom asked him if he was comparing me to other kids and he got really mad. It made me feel so worthless about myself and it made me hate my stepsister and see her as this block from my father. Yeah, there's something really weird going on there. I'm not gonna, you know, make any accusations or whatever, but how are you gonna love the stepkid more than, like, your, your flesh and blood kid, right? Maybe he's just, like, too close to the situation, I guess. I, I, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, honestly. So then came the bullying. My stepsister from age 11 to 13 was a huge bully, always making fun of me for my little quirks, taking embarrassing Snapchat videos of me, not using my name when introducing me to her friends. Uh, that's just my stepsister. Ignoring me for long periods of time. Hanging up FaceTime calls because I wouldn't turn my camera on. <laughs> uh, this is teenage girl stuff, man. I am, I am looking through the looking glass right now. I've seen through the eye of the needle, friends. <laughs> uh, she'd lock herself in the bathroom every time I said something she didn't like and she would hit me hard with memory foam pillows. <laughs> uh, yeah, that memory foam, let me tell you, packs a wallop. <laughs> I don't mean to, to, you know, downplay the situation that she's going through or anything like that, but man, I, I don't know. Me and my brother used to fight with like PVC pipes, <laughs> breaking over each other's heads and stuff, so. Memory foam pillow just strikes me as a little bit funny. I tried to tell my dad after I complained to my mom about it, and the first thing that he did was ask his wife, OP's stepmom, if she had seen any bullying. She hadn't. So my dad then insisted that I must have been bullying her. Again, really weird, super sus stuff that's going on. Then came the comments on my appearance. My dad began to judge my appearance hard. I was banned from wearing dark clothes and shirts with cartoons on them because my dad didn't like them. <laughs> your dad's a weirdo. I hate to be the one to, to break the news to you, but your, da <laughs> uh, your dad's definitely a weirdo of some type. What's wrong with graphic t-shirts? Jesus. He got my hair cut, similarly to my stepsisters. He's always making comments about my hair. I have frizzy hair, and he's always calling it big and asking me to change it. I told him that I wouldn't. I've been tempted to start gelling my hair because nowadays I see my natural hair is ugly sometimes. I should also mention that the comments got so bad that I developed anorexia to lose weight. This is really going to a dark place, I'm sure. What's up with the dad? Is he unfit? Is the mother unfit? The mom seems okay. Why can't they just go with mom full time? Obviously, dad has no interest in, in continuing to raise his daughter. I don't want my brain to jump to like, you know, dad has a thing for the stepdaughter immediately. But that's totally what it did, like, within the first few paragraphs here. <laughs> that is the, the sus thing that I've been talking about. And I didn't mention it until now because I thought it would turn around, but I don't think it's turning around. Ugh. Then came my cousin's wedding in Ireland, and this is where my mom lost all respect for my father. Because it was a private affair, we were allowed to drink, including teenagers, and I was 17 at the time. I drank the champagne, and it was caca. Champagne sucks. There's too much sugar in it. Get you some good Irish whiskey. I mean, you're in the, the homeland, aren't you? During my cousin's wedding, my stepsister joined my young cousin in talking shit to me because I was on my first glass, basically insinuating that I was a lightweight. 
Yeah, whatever, don't buy into peer pressure. I drink at my own pace, okay? You know what's good about being a lightweight? It's, it's way cheaper to get drunk. <laughs> I went to go sit with my other cousin. I have a lot of cousins. And I told her in private about what was going on. My other cousin was furious and told me that it was okay. My aunt was concerned about why we walked off so quick and my cousin told her all about what happened. My aunt and cousin went after my stepsister and other cousin and shamed them for not including me. I didn't know about all this. But later, my dad told me to go stand with my stepsister and my cousin because my aunt was nagging at him, and I finally decided to tell my dad what was up. I took him outside and explained what had happened, and he got mad at me. Yeah, his priorities are way out of whack. I don't know what's going on right now. I finally lost it on him and told me that he makes me so mad, and he doesn't know why. And when I tell him, he doesn't care. He told me to shush, but I wouldn't. I walked away from him, telling him that I'd just see him inside. My cousin was outside having a smoke, and I went up to her right away and just cried. My dad grabbed my arm, asking how I thought I could just walk away from him and for giving me shit for shaming my cousin and stepsister. My cousin stepped in and said it was her that did it. My aunts then stepped in and they all called him out. My dad tried to start a family meeting outside with my stepmom and my cousin's parents or whatever while my cousin went off to stop him. I left with my aunt who thought it was just a normal sibling argument. My dad and I were alone and he went on and on about how my stepsister and stepmom were stuck in a strange country where everyone hates him. And I explained all of my emotional baggage to him for some reason. He then threatened to call my mom from Canada. He called my mom and told her what had happened. She asked to talk to me, and when I told her my side of the story, she actually did side with me. My dad made me feel absolutely unsafe that night. He yanked my arm, didn't let me leave the table, refused to dance with me, and made me ask my stepmom to dance because quote unquote, she's a person too, you know. My mom feared for my safety. I feared that I was going to be slapped. I ghosted him for six months until my mom forced me to forgive him at Christmas because he's your father. You'd be sad if he died, etc. Yeah, but, but would I though? <laughs> then came the abandonment. My dad had a back injury a few years ago in 2013. I'll get back to that in a second. Hey, back to the back injury? Ha <laughs> ha! High five. Let's insert some levity for God's sake. <laughs> He and my stepmom go to vacations in Thailand for like 10 months at most. Is your stepmom Thai? Seems like a really weird choice, but okay. <laughs> he goes in October to November, meaning he misses my birthday, which is February 15th. For my 18th, 19th, 20th, and 21st birthday, he's not been around. He doesn't even send me a card. Just a happy birthday text. That's what an uncle does, not a father. Yeah, like I said very early on, it doesn't seem like he has any actual interest in raising uh, the child anymore. So, okay, go with mom full time, no more dad. It's sad, but also he, he's not fit, you know what I mean? All he does is blame you for shit that doesn't even make any sense. And then came January, my cell phone was broken. My dad had replaced my iPhone because my smartphone wasn't fitting in the charger, but because the good one was broken, he gave me a cracked phone, so... Basically, I asked him if I could get a new iPhone from him. My dad owns like 10 different iPhones for international travel, so I figured he could give me one. He told me to take a picture of the phone. I asked why. He said so he could trade it in. I told him I didn't have another camera to do it, and he kept telling me to ask my mom. He has a habit of texting my mom before I can, and he bothered my mom while she was sleeping. I got mad at her, and he got mad because I was carelessly discarding his items. I told him he gave me a broken iPhone, and he told me to rethink my strategy before I keep throwing stones. That was enough for me, and I sent him a text saying that I wasn't gonna talk to him. Honestly, all this seems really petty. Y you got a broken phone? How old are you? 24? 21? You're old enough to buy your own phone at this point, okay? Doesn't have to be an iPhone. I'm sorry it was cracked, but hey, it's better than nothing. <laughs> See, now I swapped it up. Now I'm kind of like leaning towards the dad side, like... Uh, don't don't be a little brat about it. You're looking at Gilf horse in the mouth and, and there's no reason for that. That doesn't make him an exceedingly fit father, 
but <laughs> uh, two wrongs is what I'm saying here. So then came March. I emailed him and told him about my feelings. I gave him an elaborate list of everything he had done to me, and he sent back a reply explaining everything word for word, bringing up my traumas, etc. He literally made it a business email and basically explained everything. It was like talking to a wall. We went back and forth with him denying everything and saying that the comparing was not really comparing but just using examples to teach. And then linked me to a website on how effective it is. It was a business website. <laughs> uh, yeah, make sure to buy the book. Click the Amazon Kindle link at the bottom, okay? I'll send you my cracked Amazon Kindle. <laughs> uh, this is totally off the rails, honestly. He said my stepmom was family, and he gave me positive things and how I should. He then got mad that I didn't visit him on Christmas and on his birthday. So y'all are both being petty is what I'm taking away from this. There's no winning in this situation, okay? <laughs> this is terrible. Then came yesterday. He messaged me on WhatsApp and said, Are you ready to talk to me? We can set up a thing with you and your counselor. I asked him if he knew what he did, and he said, Clearly you think I did something. I got mad at him and asked him how the fuck he thinks I think he did something. <laughs> he told me not to get aggressive, and I said, No, you think I did something. He told me that he tried, and he hopes I have a good day, and I told him that he was delusional. <laughs> Honestly, OP seems like kind of the one in the wrong here at the end. At the beginning, like, I understand why you have all these pent-up frustrations regarding your father, but none of this is gonna fix it, okay? <laughs> you're, you're keeping that bridge burnt. Um, and then, while the bridge is burnt, you're going back and, like, asking him for stuff? I don't know, man. I can't sign off on this. <laughs> then came today. I texted him, asking him if he thinks he hasn't done anything. He told me to list everything that he did to me, so I told him. I explained the Thailand thing again and said it will be in his life. I told him he could work from home or go to a country that's closer to Canada. He said, yeah, I've been to Florida and Portugal in the past. I told him he just admitted that he could go to a closer place and that he's choosing to go to Thailand and choosing to miss his children's birthdays. I mean, he didn't miss them. He sent a text. It's not what you expected. It's not what you wanted, but... He, he didn't just completely forget. I don't know. I, I'm getting in dad's corner. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think I have to do it. He told me that I miss his birthday. He told me that he thinks we have a misunderstanding about the comparing and that we should just agree to disagree about it. I called him delusional because comparing is not okay. Yeah, delusional seems to be the go-to, doesn't it? I don't know. I, I got a lot of thoughts on this. It, it does feel to me like OP is being an ingrate to like an untenable level <laughs> in the first part i'm like the father's terrible and then in the second part i'm like oh the daughter's terrible well guess what they're both fucking terrible <laughs> uh, all right wrap that one up <laughs> my boyfriend and i have an agreement he comes with me anytime i see him because he can't be in a room with him unsupervised my boyfriend has agreed to come to a meeting with my dad to make sure that i don't yell or slap him Y you think that's the way to handle it? 21 years old? God damn. Y'all are both a mess. Honestly, <laughs> none of this is okay. None of this is okay. Bonus round. My dad tried to make my mom use my school money that he put in. He's lied to me and my mom multiple times. I applied to the university that he went to. I told him I was worried about getting in and he told me, Of course you'll get it, baby. Your father went there. Wait, that one's a bad one? No, he's, he's vouching for you. God damn it. <laughs> uh, he called a zit on my forehead an Indian dot in a public restaurant in front of my uncle and aunt. <laughs> I mean, slightly racist. I, uh, <laughs> it seems like we're really grasping for straws at this point. He slammed a door in my face instead of being interested in having a productive discussion with me. I'm actually crying as I'm typing this because of all the pain. I learned from She-Ra and the Princesses of Power that abuse explains our behaviors. I learned from Encanto about generational trauma. 
However, I learned from Bojack Horseman that parents who were abused explains their behavior, but it doesn't justify it. At first, I felt like I could justify my mistakes, like Catra's abuse, but I see my father like Beatrice Horseman, coming from a bad family. Uh, maybe stop relating things to, to media. I think that's like one of the biggest problems that people have. Media is a good way to, to look at things from a different way, but when you try and like transparency over your own life and be like, this is how things really are. It's generally not how things really are. Take the lesson away, <laughs> but that's all it is. It's a lesson. It's meant to be applied. Not 100%. It's not a one for one exchange is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I don't know, man. It, it just seems really weird to me. I'm going to take this paragraph to talk about the positive things about me. I go to a university for English to pursue my dream of becoming a comic artist slash cartoonist. I have an amazing and handsome boyfriend who supports me every day who I'm engaged to. I have three amazing friends who care about me. I play bass guitar. I dance. I sing every weekend. I'm an excellent poet. All of these things I've accomplished without my father's intervention. Well, if you really are that determined to keep the bridge burnt, then go ahead keep the bridge burnt, you know? It seems like you're doing okay without him, and the times that you creep back into his life is essentially just to ask him for stuff, which doesn't really sit well with me, if I'm being quite frank. There is just a whole lot of toxicity flying around here. Nobody wins here, all right? Everyone's the asshole, that's, that's just how I see it. And um, as far as who is more of, guess what? That doesn't matter. You either repair the relationship as best you can, or you move on. It sounds like you're moving on, and I think that's the best thing to do. It doesn't sound like he's intruding on your life too much, which is what the title said. He's like, oh, he just comes back into my life. It's, you're the one that keeps opening the door, so maybe just keep the door shut from now on if, if that's what you're determined to do. This is definitely a no-win situation. Everybody here is the asshole as far as I'm concerned. I hate to see it. it, it is really sad because I do have like a, a pretty positive family dynamic. That's why I don't identify with these entitled parent posts all that often. But I did enjoy myself today, particularly the, particularly in the first story. The second story got a little wonky, weird out of hand, but it is what it is sometimes when you go in blind like we do. I hope that you guys enjoyed it, my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous members and patrons. You can check out the links in the description, but I know you probably already did that. That's why you're a channel member or a patron, right? <laughs> So thank you so much for being you, for helping to support the channel. That is just the, the most beautiful thing that I could ever say. I will thank you guys just because um, I, I think that you want to hear your names in your own special video. So I'll do that right now. Thank you, thank you, Legal Lush, Forensic Waver, Dungeon Bat, Billy D, Robert Waits, Gary, <laughs> Brendan, Ashraf, Janine Doors, Phantom Danica, ooh, I know her, Strain Boy, Orgasmic Steve, Skyler Bay, <laughs> The Gypsy Barber, Fly Drake, Samantha, That's Flagship, Bearded Snake, Buy to Get One Hand, and we're on Patreon, we got, wow, This Black, Dark Lushes, Harley, Robert Allen Waits, and Camille Sarah, Shanshalar, <laughs> Blue Racket, <laughs> this is super long, Rex and Wolf, Sim, Jerry, someone summoned the party demon during my birdie party, how do you get rid of them? Well, Turn around, Indy, <laughs> Captain Clown, Jerry, uh, dot, 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 Aaron Jerry. <laughs> Zeku, Esteban, for old man sign, Michael, Chumbless, you have so many supporters. Oh, another orgasmic Steve, Bean Tong, with a bag of marbles from downtown while Jerry beg for forgiveness. Send the Jerry, Silent Revolver, PCB, Boxer, the Jerry of Industry, Jerry, Remy Crane, <laughs> Dick Jerry, Destiny Viber, Jerry Shkitsune, Salty Wizard, 2 one Jerry, the two Jerrys. Is this the 2 one Jerry that we, you know, okay. that's always watching? Hey, yeah, a very tired Jerry, <laughs> a Jesse Gargonian Jerry, and Frankenberry, Assassin Pog Jerry, Aurora Wildheart, Twin Baron, Baby Jerry, Bailey Joy, We Are Dead Jerry, Benji and the Jets, Billy D, Bitch Grimland, Blades a Hero, Bronze Freakin, Catholic Jerry, Commander J Tech, Dennis Dayton, oh, it's a relative. Dr. Larks, Irinera7192, Espars, 50. Frozen Over Studios, Gensu and the Doodles, Shinwa Squad, Commissioner, Open, ADMBR, I'm Slim Jerry, yes, I'm the real Jerry. All the other Slim Jerrys are just imitating. Inquisitor Jerry, Irish Pirate, oh, that sounds familiar. Darby um, Mutiny of the Blue Marble, Arunala, Irradiated Jam, Giant Coon, ooh, Jeremy Smith, Jerry Black Tape, Jerry the Outlaw Mother Trucker, Jeremiah, where's a bullfrog? We eat bullfrog here, be careful. Jad, Crew Haiti, Cuddy Kraken, Lady in Awakening, Legitimate Kurt, Lemon, Lord Jerry O, le le Leader of Sander Jerry's. Look of X, was race car driver, he was a good friend of mine, never did win the checkered flag, but I helped him drink his wine. Okay. Like and subscribe! Melody Nix, Namdor, Metal Fetcher, I am here because my cringe senses are tingling. Needleless King 89, Fragon Soul, Phantom of the Pines, Princess Jerry King, Streak Use, Rumtide, Lacker Bays, <laughs> Streak Use, Rose Jerry Miller, Sarita de Lolita, oh, that's a very cute name, Saucy Octopus, Scarlet Coven, Sergeant Gay Cop, Bringer of the Law, I remember him, Sideway M, 
Super Saiyan. Steampunk Ellie. Stephanie Goodner. Sign up thick. Boomstick. There we go. That's the easiest name to read. Thank you for not making it hard. Tapioca Boogaloo. Tapioca. I love tapioca. The Gypsy Barber. The Italian Greyhound Dino. The Lydia's Who. The one true Pusky. Try to find another marble to get back to the real world. Hmm. You probably don't want to blow into that balloon knot. Bunker Dejo. Victor Cordero. Viking Jerry. Void. The Comment Destroyer. Oh, that's Void. Yeah. Weak Attack. Sever the Gargoyle or Clay. Void Scent Collector of Fringe. Comrade Mooney. Kira. Not another Jerry. Uh, Cage Alex 9. Red Wind. Naga Viper. Saint Blessing. Third stuff. Venom Jerry. Wasabi Jerry! Oh, Wasabi Jerry! He's in the chat! He said I love this so much! Jay Christensen! One like Jerry the Nightbeard Hunter! Sorry! A normal Jerry holds up a giant bag of popcorn, brought my own snack, and I will share. Oh, that's nice of you. Thank you for sharing. Admiral T-Tank! Amira Alder! Another stupid hipster! Atomic Jerry Zilla! Breaker of the Tom Army! Barton Dark Kierlia! Big Dad Wolf! Ooh, Blueberry and Apple Pie! Broken Spine! Horse Radish! Cake Jerry! The original different Jerry! California Jerry Girl! Chevron! Seven Lock! Chikaretta Panda! Cory does art sometimes! Kawabunga! Cody! Cryptides! Defend Jerry! Dr. Tuna, Dope Jerry, Dopamine, Dane Jerry, Rouge, <laughs> Dwarfy Dude, yeah. Ghost of Alpha, Hignot, Hydra Jerry, Salmon, Gender Jerry's Roaming the Streets of Finland, Hunting Down Naruto Headband, <laughs> that's really funny. Jerry, Jerry Alt of Rivia, Jerry and Tom versus the Happy New Year's We Beard Apocalypse, Jerry but with two S and an E, Jerry Springer, the result are in you, are not the neck beard. Jerry the Susie Baka, Jerry Moms, Got It Going On, Jerry Aldo Rivera, Jerry Ruxers, GRPD, Jerry Role Playing Game, Feet, The Obligatory Furry PC, Ready It's So Long, Bloody Butterfly Gaming, Cannon Tails, Kid Marvelous, Defender of the Innocent, Enemy to the Bearded, Kitty Kid, Lucia Lovecraft, M, uh, Chia CD, Oh, I love Chia CD, Maybe Next Time, Milk Fed Gimp, Miss Duchess, Not Invisible Angel, Raptor Art, Seldom Dark, She's My Jerry Pie, Ooh, I like that, Skymar, Ravenswood, Sligma Mail, Cry Said Jerry, Get in that cheese, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Snap Jerry, Nary, Spinny the Rog, Spoopy scary Jerry Ton is relevant all year round. Take the dubs. The original Jerry. So many Jerry's. I don't know which one is the original. To Infinity, Jerry and Beyond. To care of Snowbeard. Send him round back to Boof, Chris Trucker. Unkael, the skull. <laughs> oh, to Z's. Throw still around and do. Grow my neck, be grow. And be my lad. It's Jerry time. Post Red X Morpher hygiene. It's Jerry time. Post Red X Morpher humility. Oh. And take it to the other Patreons. Always remember, friends, that you are loved. You are worthy. You definitely, definitely deserve it. I will see you in the next one. And until then, a bye bye.